I like people the way I like my tea. In a bag underwater. Hey, how's your girl, man? Oh, uh, she left me. Oh. Yeah, my mom died too. And my dad got deported. But I got the van. It's nice. Yeah, right? Ski, I just wanted to thank you for being such a great ally. Ally? To the LGBTQ plus community. Thank you so much for all your efforts and for constantly learning and working on yourself. I'm... Okay, Sarah, you have a degree in what? Biology. Biology, mm -hmm. okay. And you did a study on what in college? Uh, so I wrote a paper on why homosexuality was a, a trait that was passed because in the gene pool, usually traits that don't help your offspring succeed and be healthy and stronger don't get taken out of the gene pool. Mm -hmm. And what I found out is that if, we're, if you're sibling is a homosexual you're more likely to have a successful offspring like so healthier like offspring. healthier offspring like they're more likely to succeed if your siblings uh, one of your siblings is homosexual so that you're even though you're not directly passing your genes you're passing your genes through your through your siblings so the gays are out here helping one child at a time yep perfect Attention all gays. New stereotypes have just been released. You've heard of bears, cubs, and otters. Here are this year's new labels. Stoat, a small and stinky gay. Newt, looks fun and cute but can be toxic. Eagle, an old wise gay who could tear you apart if he wanted to. Turtle, has a thick shell until you get them out of their shell and they die. Groundhog, coming out is the most interesting thing they'll ever do. Bat, always hangs out in a big group of people who look identical to them. Gets blamed for all the community's problems. Dolphin, Slut. Meerkat. An anxious, sassy gay who's always looking around at everyone else instead of paying attention to the conversation. Fox. The twinks are tired of being called a slang for a British prostitute, so we're just gonna give them an animal, so th th twinks are foxes now. Let's just get on board with that. Which new label are you? Tag your friends and yourself below. I need men to stop being into me, okay? For their own good. Because once you become my boyfriend, you will not remain that way for long. Not even just because my turnover rate is higher than your average underpaid burger flipper, okay? It's because conservatives are actually right. Transgenderism is a contagious disease. I just keep spreading it on accident. I have tried everything. Exorcisms. Prayer. To try and get me to stop being the Futanari Ramona Flowers to every fucking man I meet. Listen, I am happy to be a part of anybody's gender journey, but when you come over to my apartment and see my collection of Pokemon stuffies and decide, ooh, I think I might want bottom surgery, that means I can't get railed anymore! Man, I am trying to get your seed, not the yolk from your egg! I love trans women. Honestly, I would rather date a trans woman than a man any day of the week. You're in fact becoming more of my type. It's just when you decide that you want to start transgendering yourself, that means I gotta cut you loose. You gotta sail that sea alone. Catch and release. I've been down that road. I can't do anything to help you at that point. Just warn me about your intentions first, because if I'm gonna put my mother through a community college course on queer theory just so she can understand why I have a boyfriend, I actually want one, okay? I don't want to discover that my estrogen pills are missing because he wanted to see what it would feel like. Fucking women! Dating as non-binary, let's go. So I have struggles dating as a non-binary person because some people cannot tell if I am either male or female. I've been on the gay side of Tinder my entire life and I've always had struggles over there because what I've come to realize is that most gay men want other masculine men. So my friend suggested, why don't you just go on straight Tinder? So I changed my settings, thus now I'm on straight Tinder, and I kid you not, on the first day, the first day, I have had more matches on that one day than I have my entire year on gay Tinder. So I was like, okay, cool, maybe I found my people. Boy, was I wrong. I made a good connection with this one guy. He was six foot, he was Korean. We had a good conversation about anime and he asked me to hang out and I was like, oh my gosh, I would love to on a boba date. Everything seems going good, but I was like, let me just make sure that he knows that I'm non-binary before meeting up. And so as a way of him to read my profile, I mentioned something on his profile. I mentioned his dogs are really cute and you have to click through the photos to see them in hopes that he thoroughly looks through my page as well because it clearly states in my bio that my pronouns are he, him, and his and that I am non-binary. 
at one point in the conversation, he even mentioned my name because we had to change the time. And he was like, thanks, Kevin, which is traditionally a male name. I bring up that I'm non-binary and he goes, <laughs> what is that? I'm over here like, oh boy, here we go. It means I'm not necessarily exclusively male or female. And he goes, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, I just wanted to be honest with you before we meet up. And since then he has not responded. I'm just like, what was going through his head? Like, did he think I was a girl named Kevin? Because he literally said my name and what kind of guy that is looking for a relationship doesn't read someone's profile? <sighs> Needless to say, I will be staying single until further notice or until Kim Tae Young from BTS wants to uh, sweep me up off my feet. I feel like a lot of people genuinely don't understand how fucking mentally debilitating and frustrating dysphoria is. One example of this is that it's just so, so hard to find clothes that don't make you feel uncomfortable in some way. It's like this whole back and forth battle where no matter what, dysphoria always wins. Like, this shirt is too long, so it makes me look small. So let me tuck it in. Oh, but now it's too baggy, and that also makes me look small. So let me get a thinner, skinnier shirt that's more tight to my body. Oh, now, my, now I don't look as flat anymore. Now you could kind of see my binder. Oh, now I look small because the shirt is tight. Oh, the neckline of this shirt is a little too big, so my binder might show. Off of the top of my head, I could only think of two shirts that I own that genuinely don't make me feel uncomfortable or dysphoric at all and this isn't even one of them. And it's also so frustrating because like I just I feel so limited into like how I can express myself or the things I could wear or makeup or shit like that. Like it's not like I don't like feminine clothes or it's not like I don't like makeup. It's just the dysphoria is way too overwhelming where I just cannot do it like I, I I physically cannot but like and and the line for what counts as too feminine for me because of dysphoria it's an extremely short line and it all goes back to that same conversation of how like no matter what you do dysphoria is always going to be there and it's always going to find a way to ruin your life for example with this shirt I don't even want to get into the details of why this makes me low-key uncomfortable um, overall this outfit not bad but then there's also part of me with the hair where it's like oh I look too feminine because I look too much like an e-girl or, or I look too feminine because I look too stylish to be a man but then if I just wear like the most cis boring clothes ever I'm not happy either because there's no sense of style in that it's only relieving dysphoria but at the same time it's not being completely myself so that it's like impossible to find like a happy medium and I am I've been experimenting with presenting more femininely lately and I, the reason why I'm, home, I'm making this video to begin with is because that did not go well and I'm frustrated. I put on the tiniest amount of eyeliner and I'm talking like super subtle. Like I smudged it so much to the point where it was barely even noticeable. And I'm like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. In another world where I didn't have dysphoria or, or where I was cis, I would probably wear more makeup, I would probably be more stylish, I would probably wear more jewelry and things like that, but I just fucking can't. And that's what a lot of people don't understand, like, the chronically online people who say that dysphoria is internalized transphobia or some shit, don't fucking understand that it's not a choice, I have to live like this. For my entire life, I have to live in a voice in my head that's constantly telling me I look like a girl no matter what I fucking do.